Hey guys, it's me Astrid and today I wanted to show you how my mounts are doing and give you basically um, an overall mount update because I know I've done a lot of mounts and now it's time to tell you how they're doing because it's been a while and uh, I only have, uh, I'm using my iPhone so my memory is low so I'm going to try to keep it really short hopefully. Anyway, let's look at uh, the Bulbophyllums. So these Bulbophyllums here, uh, Bulbophyllum Barbigerum and Bulbophyllum Fascinator are doing wonderful on the mounts. We've got um, new roots, a healthy, this is an entirely new growth since I mounted this Bulbophyllum and it's doing great. And um, this Bulbophyllum, you can see new roots coming out. This little growth here is new. This growth here is new and they're coming out really well. Now when you mount a Bulbophyllum, you generally want to mount it on the concave side of the cork so it holds in more moisture because most of them, to my knowledge, like to stay moist, but I put it this way for aesthetics because I do what I want, um, but it's still working out well. And you want to uh, adjust the thickness of the layer of moss you use according to the orchid's needs. Um, so yeah, here's another orchid. This was a orchid I needed to rescue, and I couldn't put it in a pot because in a pot I can't keep track of the roots. Personally, it's not a good way for me. But I put this on a mount earlier this year, and after getting like small, wrinkly, suitable after suitable, dried up, awful, I put it on the mount, and it grew a small suitable, but it is a plump suitable, put out a spike, and it also has two new growths coming, and you can see little new roots over here. So um, for me, this was a good way to recover a sick oncidium. Now my climate is uh, temperate and my humidity is 40 to 60% all year. If you live in a super dry climate, it might not work that way for you. But for me, it was a great way to um, recover a sick oncidium. Next we've got my uh, moss ball mount Phalaenopsis. You can see the old leaves are about this big. You see the size. The new leaves are growing in a little bit smaller. So you can see this new leaf grew in kind of small and skinny. This one grew in smaller than the old leaves, but this one hopefully will grow bigger. You can tell if a Phalaenopsis is stressed by the size of the leaves it grows out. The small, If it grows out smaller than the last one, it's probably stressed and there's something wrong. You should check on that. And if it grows in bigger, that means it's happy. And I predict that this one will get nice and happy because it's got new roots coming in kind of all over this mount, um, especially at the base of the plant. So it's doing pretty well. This mount here is too new to really comment on. Same with my Dendrobium nestor, but the uh, Miltonia spectabile is doing well. It got a wrinkled accordion leaf because I neglected to water it, not because of uh, being on the mount itself, but it's got new roots growing in there, and uh, it's just doing wonderfully. It does really, really well on this mount. Next, we've got Prosthicia cochleata. You can see there's probably a lot of new roots in there. Um, the new growths are coming along healthy. And the only problem it has is that I ripped a lot of the old roots on it, which is why the old pseudobulbs are wrinkly. I neglected it a tiny bit too, but mostly it's probably the wrinkly bulbs are due to ripping off a lot of roots to get it off that horrible tree fern mount. So yeah, but this is doing great on this big mount. It's heavy, it's beautiful, looks natural. I love it. It's very healthy. Uh, next we have this strange way I'm doing my Brassavola nodosa. So I got sick of hanging it and I put it in a cup now. I just get it wet and then I let it drip into the cup and I think that keeps the root tips really hydrated. Brassavola nodosa does like to dry out but it has been putting out tons of new growth since I got it. Go back and watch my first video with this and you'll see that it's really done a lot of growing and, and these roots are looking great so I could say this is a successful sort of semi-mounted thing that I have done. Here's another moss ball mount from my Falpin Long Cherry. Now this one is doing great. Look at these root tips everywhere. The new leaf, this leaf um, that is right here is a new growth and it came in as big as the old leaves so this is doing really well in this setup and um, yeah it's putting out new roots old roots are branching off we've got root tips all over this ball it's loving it 
and I'm excited about that. Another mounted fowl that's doing well, I'm gonna keep it on here actually, putting out lots of roots. Um, the leaves that it grew in, this one was a little smaller and sicker, this one's bigger. It's got another new leaf coming in that will hopefully be as large as the old leaves. But it actually, what I really like about this is it's a successful mount because look at this root wrapping all the way around and anchoring itself to the mount. That's what we want ideally with the mount is that the orchid will anchor itself to it because they grow on trees in nature. So when they grow on trees, they anchor themselves to the tree and it's doing that here. In fact, these two roots are gonna to start to do that. They're doing it right now, which is awesome. Next, we've got my Oncidium Heaven Scent Redolence. I put it on a mount and gosh, it has like half roots, half mount. This is a vigorous grower. If you grow Oncidiums, well, get Oncidium Heaven Scent Redolence. It smells wonderful and uh, it, it grows really well. And this mount is doing wonderfully. This new growth is healthy. It's in spike, nice and plump. The only reason it's wrinkly is because I'm a lazy student and I neglected it a little bit. So yeah. Um, who else is mounted that I'm missing? I'm sorry, I'm giving you like whiplash here, but let me show you one more mount that is quarantined because it had spider mites and I honestly don't know how they got in my collection, but that's neither here nor there for this video. So you can see the spider mite damage too. Horrible little things. We have a healthy new growth on this no ID bubble phylum that I got from Seattle Orchid at a show. You can see little new roots are coming in there. I water my bubble phylums almost every single day and it's it's doing great. I hope this flowers for me so I can finally ID it. But yeah, all my mounts are basically doing wonderfully. Now, if you want to grow orchids on a mount, what you got to do is accept that you have to water them a lot. Generally, I just water when the moss is dry. If I have an orchid that likes to dry out more, I let it stay dry for an extra day. If I have an orchid that likes to stay hydrated, I tend to water it just as the moss approaches dryness. It's really easy, but it can be tedious to water your orchids so often. It works for me because I only have about 10, I think, mounted orchids, so it's not too hard, but if I had a greenhouse, I would probably have a lot more of my orchids mounted because I could just spray them all with a hose, but you know, growing in my living room, I have to be careful not to get the carpet wet and the furniture wet. But if I have a greenhouse someday, I think I'll mount tons of my plants. Also, tons of orchids do really well on mounts. You can do dendrobiums, cattleyas, phalaenopsis, oncidium, encyclia, vanda, all kinds will do okay on mounts. Um, but semi-terrestrial orchids should not be mounted, like paphiopetalums and phragmopediums. You don't want to put them on a mount because they'll get too dry. Now, what's the one last thing? Also, my climate is 40 to 60% humidity year round, and in winter it goes up to like 80% humidity. Uh, so for me, keeping mounts is easy because they stay hydrated due to the moisture in the air. If you live in a really arid climate, mounts might not work as well for you. So just keep that in mind. And if you wanna try mounts, I have some tutorials. You can see the links below. Um, and it's always worth giving mounting a shot. You never know how it's gonna turn out for you. And if you have an orchid you don't mind losing due to experimentation, go ahead and mount it. It's such a nice, aesthetically pleasing way to keep your orchids. It, they really like to grow that way. They thrive on it if you take care of them. And uh, lastly, fertilizing them isn't hard. Just mix fertilizer in the water like you would normally for other orchids and water them with the fertilizer water. It is a piece of cake. Um, so yeah. Also, it is basically impossible to overwater with mounts. So there's that added benefit as well if you're a heavy handed with water. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this mount update. Let me know what you think and I'll try to give you another update in several months and show you the other mounts that I have and tell you how they're doing. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a nice day. Happy growing. Bye.